Hello again, Votoms robot fans, or armored trooper fans. So this is a 148 scale Votoms I'm holding in my hand. It's less than four inches tall. It's uh, made by Takara, and it's part of their Actic gear line. They're really quite amazingly detailed for something so small. They're all plastic. The hatch is open. There's a you know, character inside, and you can swap out parts and all that stuff. And they'll do the crouching mode as well. But anyways, uh, I've been watching some more and more of the actual episodes of these cartoons and so you know i just researched ebay and i saw this on at a decent price so i decided to buy it this i would normally avoid this scale it's huge look at this difference <laughs> right so uh granted i haven't opened it i have no idea how big it is inside it does say 2.5 inch uh unit which to my understanding translates to around 128 scale 128 I do have to give a shout out to a YouTube channel, Awesome Action Toys. That guy has been doing videos on all these B25 uh, toys for several years. So you can just look up B25 on YouTube and you'll find Awesome Action Toys. So he does some on Votoms, but mostly the whole um, Acid Rain series, which I've seen in toy shops. But again, uh, I don't know. I just don't feel like collecting them. They're just too big. But I really like these Votoms, so let's take a look here. All right, so Marshy Dog here is some sort of uh, aquatic robot here, and the production code is ATM09 of you are. Chirico QV is the star character of this Votoms cartoon series. I haven't watched it enough to know his whole story. He's some sort of super soldier or something like that. So there's a side picture, and then we got a nice back back photographs here you know the hatch opens and all that stuff it looks like it's weathered as well so that's cool same side here legally is here probably yeah i'm wondering if there's a copyright date i don't see it age is 16 and up so it's it's more of a well it's still a toy if 16 year olds are playing with it but it's i mean those are teenagers right so this is a i would consider it more of an adult collectible stuff out first what is this thing oh the guy's uh, the robot's gun so votoms are basically humanoid tanks you know people pilot these tanks so this gun is pretty big of course being 128 scale yeah it seems to have a toy like detail and then here we have some wheels that uh He's going to the feet, I'm guessing. Why they're so tightly bagged, uh, I'm not sure. I guess keep them from scratching each other. I'm actually standing up today. This is the first time I think I've ever stood up to do a video because almost everything I review is really small, 164, even 1400 scale. But uh, gotta get the Votoms action. Okay, we got the instruction manual. <laughs> I, don't really, I don't see why this has to be in a bag of plastic. That seems really wasteful. It's just some instructions, and you can download them all online anyways, right? Okay, so some assembly is going to be required. Here's a crouch down mode. Uh, how to go about doing the landing mode, it's called. There's an arm punch feature, other stuff. Okay, I'll just put that aside for now. There's nothing on the back. Okay, we've got a big uh, vacuum phone packaging. And uh, we've got the backpack here. The character itself. These flotation tanks. And the little character's accessories. Sorry. And then the actual main robot. And he's got some protective things for his legs to get, keep them from getting scratched, which is kind of funny because he's a weathered robot. It probably could actually go to use a few scratches, right? All right, so these little cogwheels, which I don't understand what the differences are. Maybe these are paddle wheels. 
and these are traction wheels maybe so you can obviously swap them out I don't know if this is a friction thing yes it is okay I guess I'll pop this one in see how easy it is to do it looks like oh well that's very easy <laughs> that was very easy I think it's better to flex the thing upwards or something now I feel like I'm going to break the pins off doing that. So that's these are going to go on and I'm never going to swap them again. Okay. Yeah. All right. So they do rotate. I think I'm going to sit down now that I got all the packaging out of the way. So hold on a moment. And we are back. All right. Let's go with this little figure here. So this would be a 128 scale figure. It's, well, how tall is such a thing? Where are my calipers? He's 68 millimeters. I'm a little curious, so here's a calculator. If we take 68 millimeters and multiply it by 28, yeah, that's he's a little a little bit under two meters, so I guess that is around one twenty eight. He's a pretty tall character, it seems. Uh, I'm not going to convert that to inches. Inches is the dumbest form of me measurement. It's so inefficient, it's ridiculous. Try to convert it yourself. <laughs> I'm not going to do it, but if you want, I can at least do this. Sixty eight millimeters is two point six seven inches. Yeah, I guess you could just multiply that by twenty eight and divide by twelve, but I, I just hate the English measurement system. Even the British don't use it all the time. Okay, <clears throat> so he seems to be raw plastic. You know, the red part is the raw plastic, but then they paint it on the brown here. So he's got brown boots, and the boots seem to have some nice uh, little rivets or something on them. I'm gonna get my dental pick now. Leaf start at the bottom this time. Uh, there's a little ball peg there, so a tiny bit of movement very tiny bit of movement not much a little heel rocker and all that stuff okay so the knee single jointed knee it's actually a half a split split hinge joint right so it can go 90 degrees on his knee now the upper leg has a, a swivel feature so that's nice and then the hip area is on a ball peg as well so that can swing all the way ridiculously up so you can uh unrealistically maybe backwards as well yeah i don't know how many humans who can actually do that but uh <laughs> he can actually kick his back never mind his butt he can almost kick his head probably he can kick his shoulder so that's pretty crazy uh, i watched this channel the foosh he's all about six inch action figures and he's always talking about kicking his own butt so <laughs> The push would love this. Uh, anyways, we got a little holster here. Two holsters or something. I don't know. Maybe they're not holsters. They just look like ammo pouches or something. Knee pads here. have a little bit of brown going around them. But oddly, the strap only goes around one side. It just kind of magically hangs on his knee. This uh, thigh has a silver dot. I don't know why, because I haven't watched much of the show again. But the belt also has some silver, so that's nice. And then the, some brown here. Uh, so the torso will swivel left and right. And then also, it's got a hinge. You can see the metal pin. So that's a lot of articulation, more than most 12-inch, 12 12-inch, 12 uh, I mean 12-scale or 6-inch action figures. Good back movement as well. So this is actually a pretty good toy. Uh, the hands, they look like uh, Lego, Lego hands, I believe. Uh, I think uh, Awesome Action Toys mentioned that. Again, a hinge for their elbow. Depends about 90 degrees. You can see actually the, the hand is like pegged, popped in with a ball. You could probably pull it out. Yep, there you go. Not, not a tight fit at all. Very loose. But it's so small, it, it won't fall out either. Hmm, interesting. So in fact, let's see, we have that grabby hand, grabby hand, and then we have 
two wavy hands left and right. Boy, these things are so small. I, I can't even hold them. And then two fisty hands. Look how small they are. So we'll put a uh, wavy hand on this guy here. Oh. Hmm. I'm just, I do feel like that's going to fall out. That was so loose. It was crazy. You could put some poster putty in there, though, to tighten it up. And then uh, let's put a fist on this guy over here. Yeah, this side is super loose as well. So be mindful of that. If you actually do play with these, if you like toss this against something, I'm sure the hand's going to fall out eventually. Okay, so more brown paint here for these uh, shoulder straps. And they go with these uh, shoulder pads that actually is a little flexible. So you can, you can actually bend the arm up quite a bit. It will move up. So that's pretty good. So the shoulder is a hinge and it's a ball. And it's a peg. It's a peg in the torso, so that rotates around. Then there's a hinge, you can see right there, right? And then the I'm pretty sure the bicep, yeah, also swivels. Yeah, so you can get a lot of movement out of this guy. Very cool. Nice. Very nice. Okay, so now we have a, an elbow pad with two dimples. A couple dimples in the forearm and then a brown cuff or something around the wrist. And then we have a relatively well painted head. Uh, he's got blue hair. You can actually see his eyes are printed. So they're not just like white dots, you know, like animes. <laughs> there actually is multiple colors going on. So I'm really happy about that. There's a hole in the back. Maybe he pegs into stuff or stuff pegs into him. Uh, in fact, actually, here's a, a gun piece. It's like a pistol. Yeah, pretty weak pistol. You might actually be able to use a uh, 12 scale pistol, which I don't have right now, but I do have some back at home. And maybe I'll check that out later. Can, but the, unfortunately, the grip is so round, Lego style, you'd have to use some putty to put a more realistic pistol into the guy. Let's see, I'm trying to get peg this guy in. Hmm, it won't peg, go slide in there. No, that one's really tight. Let's try this side. This side works better. I don't know. This one may have not cooled properly after the molding process. Okay, so I guess we'll pop this thing in now. Free, sucker. Okay. So there's another head. So that makes me uh, first look at this guy's articulation of the head. Pretty good. Front, back, side to side. Obviously, you can spin around. It's on a ball peg. So... Or maybe it's a double ball. No, I think it's just a peg molded into the, the torso piece. Yeah, okay. But anyways, there's a piloted mast head here. So it's got a, <coughs> excuse me, a gas mask. And uh, the canister is actually a metallic. It's very shiny. But then the tube is a matte finish, uh, silver here, matte finish for the goggles, and then some blue, which I think they actually can look through. It's like a clear panel on the cartoon. All right, so this is gonna pop on, hopefully. It's kind of a soft plat, rubbery. It's a, one of those dense rubbers, you know, so it can flex. Yeah, so that that's pretty cool. It does look a little weird though. Maybe with some heat, you could, you know, bend that so it's hanging more proper like that. Okay, so I gotta say, uh, for something this small, I'm actually very impressed with the articulation. It's uh, quite impressive. Very good. And the only fault really is the, the looseness of these hands. It's, they're exceptionally loose. So let's put this guy aside for now. Let's get to the big boy. Okay. I guess I'll put the accessories on after. It'll be easier to do the articulation without them. So let's get a different angle because this thing's tall. Uh, so how tall is this mech? It looks a little super deformed. It doesn't look quite as uh, slim in proportions compared to this guy. See how the thighs are longer and slimmer? So yeah, I think this is a little bit cartooned. But let's get the calipers out. Uh, can I even measure something this tall? Bottom of the foot to the top of the head in the standard packaging stance. 50, 
5.64 inches, but going to a real uh, 143.5. So I'm going to do like another calculation 143.5. times 28 so in real life this is four meters tall but what is this web this website here has all the specs on uh, bow toms let me hit the focus there uh, height wait wait here dimensions overall height 3.73 so yeah something's off this is actually bigger than 128 scale Overall height. Oh, wait a second. I didn't measure the... See, the antenna. I don't know if this is factoring in the antenna. Which doesn't go vertical, that I can see. So it's hard to say. Maybe this actually is. Uh, hold on. Let's do another thing. Let's take 3.73 meters. 3731 millimeters, right? Uh, divided by 143.4. So this is showing it's like a 126 scale, but that's without the antenna. So I think if the antenna were actually in the up position, Maybe it actually is truly 128 scale because the figure itself, the, this little dude does calculate out. So it's not that important, right? We're talking about a cartoon character, <laughs> a cartoon robot, but it's just interesting to know, I guess. All right, let's get the calibers out. All right, back to this. All right, so continuing. Hmm. I'll start from the bottom again. So we obviously saw the spinning paddle-ish wheels here. On the bottom of the feet, there's two Phillips screws. They're quite small, holding the feet together. There's some minor details on the bottom here. These are minor weathering as well. Okay, now how about this foot articulation? Okay, so similar to the, the small Votoms I had, uh, the Actic Gear one, this actually has a hinge up here. And then there's a ball peg in the bottom. So that's the same way that uh, Takara does their tiny ones. And it does give a great amount of freedom. So, you know, obviously you can make the guy taller. But then you can, you know, do a lot of uh, articulation. Look at the rocker. That's crazy. Wow. So you can get some pretty crazy poses, I think, out of this guy. What's nice about this larger scale is you've got this extra tampo printing. So I don't know if that's legible. Hold on, let me get a in on that. I think it is. I'm at four times magnification. I think that's legible. RL nine five eight seven or, or it's close. Same with this one. That's upside down. Hmm. Maybe they're just science. Sci Some of the letters are sci-fi, but they're well printed, so that's cool. All right, so this little vent area is a paint app. It's part of this plastic molding. This is all raw plastic here, this olive plastic here. But it's got a graininess to it, so it's not so shiny. Uh, it's nice. So this little uh, foot armor plate here, it does pivot up and stuff. Looks like it can even pop out, but I'm not going to do that. Oh, that's also on a hinge. So this, this is a hinge right here, and then this is hinged on that piece. So that's why it's so far up, and this one's so far down. But I can articulate that like that, but I can also hinge it down. So that's really cool. Again, more printing is very nice. It's not symmetric either. There's some asymmetry here, some printing on these side, this side, but not this side. All right. Uh, this knee... It's just weathered. This knee has some printing on it, and it's got a hose coming out of it. But the hose just floats here in midair. I guess they didn't figure out the articulation to go into this piece, which is too bad because even uh, Takara does have that hose going in there, and it will crouch down just as well. Let's just leave this over there if you want to look at it. 
All right. So these armor plates all are hinged. They can move out of the way so the legs can move up. So what's going on with this plastic? It almost looks like this is mixed plastic, like this brown inside swirled in. All right, it's, it's interesting. But maybe it's, maybe they, I don't know. I don't, it does look like it's part of the plastic, this swirling. Or they painted it brown, weathered it brown, and then painted white, white over it or something. It's very, I don't know. I'm not sure. It's cool, though, because it's supposed to be a used robot, right? Okay, so we seem to have a double-jointed knee. But I know that this thing also pulls apart, or should, because it has to go into crouching mode. As to how, though. You can see there's actually a metal joint for that. And there's a pin here holding this knee knee plate. This knee thing also articulates, so that's nice. Actually, two pieces. So, how does this thing come out? You can see inside, hopefully, there's a hinge here. And so, I'm... Th Oh, there it is. Okay, so now I can see it. So it's all come out and out. And then this uh, thigh is actually ratcheting. But this, it, oh, it's not a ball. Look at this. So it's actually metal, so that's nice. It's a hinge, but then that's on a pin that can actually swivel around inside this little uh, crotch area. And what is this? I don't know. It's screwed together, but why is this plastic thing here? Sorry, uh, I'm looking at the toy, not through my screen. I gotta try to look through the screen now. All right. ah, it doesn't move. Maybe something attaches to it. Okay. So, but even though that hasn't moved, the thigh will swivel. So there's some sort of peg going in here, and it's rotating around that peg. But now, you hear that ratcheting. Or maybe that's just a tight fit. It's this thing making the noise inside of there. Anyways, you get a lot of movement here. Okay, so that's the crouching down mode. I might as well complete it because uh, we're gonna get this thing crouching down and then Pretend like we're going to load the driver in there. All the way back. I really like how that knee is articulated also. And then the foot comes out a lot. So even though this character, well it's not character, this robot looks deformed, like it looks shorter than it should be. It's still, the way they've engineered it, it can still crouch down, even though it has short legs. So I'm pretty impressed with that. Hmm. But now, it's not going all the way there. Oh, there it goes. An extra click. It's close. It's really close, but there's a little air there. Okay. Well, you can actually get it so the feet lay flat. See, like that. So then... Alright, so... Jericho would be hanging out and wants to get into this guy. So now the hatch would open. Oh, see, that's not horizontal. Oh, wow, that way it can go another notch. Hmm. Ah, but it's not. See, that's where it wants to be. Maybe I guess it's just supposed to rest on its fists or something. Kind of like this. That's a little bit better. The cockpit seems more horizontal. Hmm, oh well. Okay, so then, yeah, he would grab this. He would step up here, grab there, and hop in here. So the cockpit itself, I like that it's multiple colors. You know, the seat's like a 
purplish, dark purplish, and then the rest of it's like a light purple gray. There's a bunch of hoses inside of that thing. Um, do these controls? Yeah, this thing pivots. Oh, and there's actually printing on it. So that's kind of nice, some buttons and stuff like that. All right, in the side, oh, you can see the ratcheting. Well, uh, maybe, let me get a different light here. It's really hard to do all this through a phone screen. I'm gonna have to get the flashlight. But right here, you can see those teeth. Right, so that's a ratcheting mechanism for the uh, shoulder peg to uh, rotate upon. Really neat. Up in here, there's some weathering. There's also some extra details up inside the cockpit cover there. All right. I think we want to see this guy actually driving this thing, right? So I got to put the uh, way go grippy hands on. Get this gun out. Get this guy in a sitting position. The hands like this. <laughs> Look at this articulation, it's crazy. This is better than most Spider-Man figures in like six inch form. It's just nuts. B25, you guys are doing a great job, very cool. All right, so that's actually too much articulation, but let's see. Okay, move this back. Hmm, I guess you might have to spread his legs apart further or lower. Uh, see how loose that hand is? So that's, that's kind of a problem. Again. I'm trying to get it so he grabs these controls, all right? So I'm going to move the arms up and then move them down later. I'm trying to get his legs compact enough or spread out enough. Ah, there we go. So now the controls are really close to him. And maybe pivot his head up a little bit. I hold gas tank thing. I don't know if it should be hanging out in front of that or not or near him. There, I got one hand on. It's kind of hard. Maybe this thing does have to be a little more forward. The controls, oh, no, no. Well, for now, that's close enough, right? So that's kind of neat that you can actually pose the guy so well. Uh, I think this, does this open? No, on, in the cartoon show, I think this opens up to see his feet and stuff. And I do have one of these 148 scale ones where it does open. I just don't have it right, right now. Okay, so that's pretty neat. Oh, wait. No, see that gas tank is colliding with the top now. So I'll put that down. Okay, now it does have a snap to it, this cockpit. I don't know where that snap happened, but it's well designed that it actually snaps down. Very cool, very tight fit. It's so tight, you would be, you know, no one would criticize you for thinking that doesn't open at all. That's very impressive. That's the beauty of plastic. You would never get that in a die cast model, never. Or show me a video of some, something like that, I'd be really impressed to see it. Okay, well, you can obviously see the character through this opening. Let me get this flashlight again. My lighting is not very good here. So that's neat, you know, you could have a posing up through it. All right, so now this visor comes down. Hmm. What, what is keeping, it doesn't want to go down all the way. I can't imagine what would be stopping it though. Right? What makes that spring upwards? Strange, very strange. Huh. Well. All right, well, anyways, this thing obviously rotates. You got these really nice jewels going on. Clear green and clear red. And then you have some molded detail behind the lens 
It would have been cool if they had more detail. They could have easily added more detail. Like, it would have been cool if one had, like, uh, the James Bond intro scene of the camera aperture. You know, the sliding spiral aperture. That would have been really cool. Anyways, nice. This one actually is open. So, it's got some molded details. See, it would have been cool, I think, to have more molded details like this in behind those lenses. And then, interesting enough, uh, these things also have details, and they're not the identical. They're, each one is different. See, this one's just a circle. This is uh, two circles with some dots around it. And then this has like a Mercedes star inside of it. So all, all of them are quite different. Interesting. Very cool. Very cool indeed. All right, so obviously those rotate around. And then this whole thing, I think, slides. Yep, it slides in this slot. In that slot, you can't see the character because I think there's supposed to be maybe a screen or something behind there. So that's realistic. That's one thing that the, the little guy doesn't have. The little guy, you can actually see the character because there's air passing right through that slot. But again, look how small this is. So it's cool. Okay, let's get this guy standing up again in a more normal position. Ratcheting effect. Ratcheting. Let's get these legs back in order. Mm, just kind of wiggling it and pushing it together at the same time. Oh, well that's disturbing. That is disturbing. That just broke. That's not a friction fit. Those three pins are broken. Wow. This is a brand new toy. You guys saw me open this thing, right? Uh, so, wow, B25, man. That's, that's not good. What kind of plastic are you using? This is some brittle stuff. ABS, I guess. And uh, I can see some crazy glue here. You know, the vapor effect of it. So, but we do get to see the construction of this. How it's screwed together. But this is disturbing. Well, I guess since it was glued in the first place, I'll have to glue that later myself. For now, we'll continue on without it. But be mindful of that. It might fall apart, but you can fix it pretty easily. Okay, so that, I think, side is down. I'm going to hinge this thing down. Okay. Hinge the knees down. Okay. So now I think those that leg is compact as it should be. This one needs to go a little bit more. Okay. Very good. A long video. Sorry, I like to be thorough. I like to know what I'm buying. This was an expensive toy, so I want to know if I'm getting my money's worth. All right, so this hinges, obviously, and uh, this hinges as well. So the tanks are attached to this thing. So there's a big peg. It's like a matte finish, so that's nice. No one, you just don't think of war vehicles having gloss paint, you know? <laughs> so, even a sci-fi one. So that's a pretty firm attachment. And there's actually a recess, uh, not a recess, a groove to keep that circle from splitting apart, you know, in the long run. So that's a pretty smart design choice there. Obviously can't say the same about that. So those, are, those aren't gonna fall apart or fall off. Very nice. Very firmly attached, okay. All right, yeah, a whole lot of rear mechanics you can see here. Uh, there's some printing here. Uh, 2021 was when this toy was made, so that's nice for, if you ever buy this without the packaging, you'll know how old it is. All right, this tank, I was continue on with the details of the back. There's some uh, rods here that the pack is gonna clip onto. Uh, there's actually screws, two screws holding this torso together here. I think hoses may be going there. This is a vent here. It seems to be a separate plastic piece, but no extra paint. Would have been nice if it was a different color, but I guess it's not accurate to the cartoon then. A vent as well. Looks good here. On the arm, they have some more tampo printing. Very nice. This little white 
circle thing and then some arrow here um, okay let's go into the hands of this robot hmm. I thought this there is a steel pin right here so it must articulate oh there it is so this finger is separate and then these other three fingers are joined together as one piece the thumb seems to be static the thumb doesn't move there is a screw in a like a and a tooth so that's something about the weapon let's hold on there and there's a pin here a steel pin so okay that's why that's interesting though this Oh, I think it's for the gun. Yeah, I think I saw that in a Awesome Action Toys video. There's a big peg hole here as well. Nice printing again, printing there. Uh, this thing has a double jointed, uh, you know, I'm gonna have to lose this tank, it's getting in the way. We'll get to that one later. Double jointed elbow, so that's a lot of, uh, a lot of movement there. Very impressive actually. Okay, this punch feature, so that just slides out, and punches. Hmm, seems like a different plastic than that. Okay. Oh, the punch will also give you even more articulation if, if the other, because it's clearing it more. So again, impressive for a robot. Okay. Some sort of slots in there I'm not sure something about the engineering so now we have metal uh, they're not rods there's circular tubes but they're I don't know what these are called anyways they're using friction to hold the joints together uh, so it's nice so it's like a double jointed shoulder in this you know one two so that's a lot of articulation yeah, very nice. And uh, a lot of it's hidden by this nice shoulder thing that also hinges and moves. And on it, you got a hanging ring. Now, closing that up, you can hide that whole thing. So for a static pose, it's all hidden away. That's really nice. And then that ratchet that we saw from the cockpit inside, yeah, it does exactly that. You see the clearance for this shoulder piece. Yeah, very cool. Big uh, rivet marks on the shoulder. So the other arm is the same deal, of course, just reversed. All right, I think that's everything for this guy. Oh, no, there's a little uh, armor plate here for the, the wrist, and there's even molded details on the back side, so that's really neat. You don't get down the 148 scale stuff. I don't know if that's a vent or a light, but Main mystery is why doesn't this go all the way down? Oh, I don't think it's supposed to. Now I see. Oh, let me try to get the light. You see, hopefully, there's a flat spot right here where I'm touching. And this is flat or thinner than down here because this plastic is, I guess, sweeping that surface. So, it's actually colliding with this here if I press it all the way down and it's popping back up. So that's the reason. It's not This toy is not designed to actually have the visor go all the way down. It's only supposed to go down that far. And I guess you're just always supposed to see these vents, which is what I do see on these illustrations I pulled up on the monitor. So, okay, I guess that's accurate to the cartoon. Okay, the backpack now. We got some printing there, 2019. Hmm, okay, so this is older or something. And there's a steel pin in there, so it must hinge. Ah, okay, so this clips onto those bars on the back here, and then it hinges up. Okay, let's do it. Popped. All right, we got some nice red arrows, a little white box of text, some pipes going around and it does hinge up and so that they do that so you can do the crouch down mode you know with the legs back here but standing up you want it like this and then these must go into the back of the legs here oh so this thing goes up and down inside 
and it is it's a pretty dense rubber I, I hope it stays rubbery for long it's not very soft all right so that pops in just friction okay so move the lid you can see it sliding in and out of the, the back gas tank so that's cool very very nice again b25 all right Boy, this is a letdown right here. So I'm gonna have to come back. I'm gonna glue this back on. All right, so the little pistol now, you can see there's slots in it and that's what, you know, those tabs in the hand are for. I guess to help keep it aligned in the hand. So let's see, yeah, that definitely works. And then uh, these fingers are really tight. Yeah, there we go. I guess the pistol's out, the f trigger finger's outside the, the grip, as it should be, unless you're ready to fire. <clears throat> All right, so that's actually smart engineering, I think, to keep the uh, the gun aligned with the palm properly. Most of the time, it just like droops and stuff like that, right? So again, very good. So let's uh, maybe twist this up a little bit. Yeah, let's just, no, let's just do that. Trying to get a good pose. Uh, I'm not sure if I covered it here, but the torso also rotates, and there's a ratcheting going on there as well. <clears throat> I think I'm a little nebulous about is uh, why this hole is here. I think maybe it's to mount other parts from other b25 products yeah that might be it i've seen photos of these with treads and stuff like that from other b25 figures all right so these are all the little leftover parts that you won't display all at the same time so not too many let me get this spinner here so i actually had to put a flash on the solar thing because the thing's so big and heavy but anyway, as you can see, you know, in size comparison, the, this is a big, big toy. Uh, I gotta push it back even. So 148 scale in my hand versus 128 scale, which is B25 now. And, sorry, there we go. Yeah. Well, what do I think about this thing? Um, I'm impressed with a lot of the design of it. Uh, the actual mechanics of how the joints and stuff operate. I'd be really happy if that plate didn't fall off that side side of the leg. I did crazy glue it back. If that never happened, I would say this is absolutely wonderful because it seems pretty durable, uh, except for that, which doesn't you know. But mine is that all the hinges look really strongly built. All the uh, ball pegs and stuff are really oversized and then the actual little character has so much articulation I never expected it to be that good so uh, yeah I'm happy with this I I did actually read an article on the 1 6 scale which is made by 3 0 but that article said something broke on that as well now something breaking on this is a bit pretty much a letdown because this I consider this an expensive toy. Look it up on eBay yourself. But look up the price of the three zero one six scale Votoms. If something broke on that, that would be heartbreaking. So uh, I'm happier that I got this smaller thing, even though it doesn't have a cloth figure driving it like the three zero one. And uh, I wouldn't put it beyond myself to consider buying some other ones. I think there's three other models from this brand. There's a regular scope dog, I think a standing turtle or a standing tortoise, and a fourth one I forget. Maybe it's a different color or something. Anyways, for today, uh, I'm pretty happy with this. I can pose it so much easier than this guy. Well, this guy it does work really well. It's just that some of the parts fall off very easily because they're uh, just little friction fits. Whereas the friction fits on this are much more robust because obviously it's a bigger scale. So that's why I thought I'd try it. 
to actually play with this. <laughs> to actually use it as a toy to play with. With these guys are more for display, I think. Just really cool display. Wow, a super long video. I apologize for that, but you probably fast forwarded to the end anyways. And I guess I'll see you the next time I get a Votoms robot in. Alright, see you guys.